Oh, there are our neighbours. Everton, do you actually know the distance between the two clubs? Too close. Too close. Too close. People normally estimate about a mile. Uh, last time it was measured was in May, um, and the distance was 43 points. Ha <laughs> 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 Hello, welcome to Anfield. Uh, we're going to be doing a tour today and I'm here with Danny. And Danny, hello. Hello. Right, we can't wait. I'm sure you all want to see what it's like inside the ground. Probably you've been outside, you've been in the stands, but Danny and I are going to take you inside the stadium, inside Anfield. We always start our Liverpool FC tours with the great man, big man who made it all happen because without him I wouldn't be in the job and no one would come on the tour to Liverpool because um, without him we wouldn't be very relevant, we wouldn't be the success and the global attraction that we are today. He put us on the map not only in England but in Europe as well and in 1965 he won us our first FA Cup. Would you believe we waited 73 years to win our first FA Cup and back then in the 60s the FA Cup was more prestigious than winning the league. Everton had won the FA Cup, we hadn't won it uh, and they used to take the mick out of us. Thank God the tables have turned now. The most handsome Spanish man I have ever seen in my life. Rafa Benitez gets a high five because he won us number five in Istanbul, the miracle of Istanbul. Just turned 12, uh, going into cardiac arrest on my living room floor. I could not believe what I was witnessing. Honestly, it was just an unbelievable night. We'll never forget it. And what about now? Did you have, what about then when you're 12 year old Danny? Does 12 year old Danny thinks he works here and does this every day? Exactly. I would never have imagined that I would be working here one day telling people about this night when I was watching it then. It, honestly, it's a dream come true to represent the club, talk to supporters on a daily basis about the, the night that we've all witnessed. And there's plenty more to come as well with this manager, with this team. The good times are back and uh, I just can't wait for every game now. This is the gantry where the TV commentators and cameramen would sit on a match day. It's actually 15 metres higher than the old one used to be there before the main stands was extended. So if you look behind us, this goes 94 metres, uh, sorry, 94 rows back. Um, and all the way up there, you, you need binoculars, uh, you, you you'd think. Be, uh, but, um, I've actually sat quite up there, I'm long sighted, so it doesn't affect me. But uh, yeah, Martin Tyler, Gary Neville, Jamie Carragher, the, the likes of them, they would all sit here on a match day. Um, and Martin Tyler, not that I care about what he says, says this is the best gantry that he sits in in the Premier Good League. View. Uh, look at the view. Not only have you got the view down there, you've also exactly. got the view down. Uh, if you look ahead, the Sir Kenny Dargley stands, that is the stands named after him, and he doesn't even sit in it. He sits in the main stand here, but um, imagine sitting here and looking I'm up looking over and, and your name. name yeah. Well, he's is, earned it, hasn't he? He's earned it, he's earned it. So what's the difference between this tour and let's say the Bernabeu or the New Camp? You can come on a guided tour, which is an 80 minute tour and you're taken around the stadium by a guide like myself. Because this just isn't for me this today, is it? This is you, this is you every day, this is Danny every day. This is my job, uh, this is what I do. I talk about the Reds and football in general to supporters from around the world. So what we're looking at now is the original main stand seats. These seats um, are from the main stands when it first opened in 1906 and they stayed here until May 2016. So 110 years, these were the main stand seats. And if you sit on them, they're not the most comfortable things yeah, but they've in seen, the world. They've seen some sights though, haven't they? And there's Jordan Henderson about to lift number six. Uh, I don't know how many times I've watched the footage. So can you do uh, the dance? The little... <laughs> yeah, can you do the trophy lift? Danny? The little... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he loves doing it, doesn't he? But uh, no, what an amazing night, what an achievement by this group of players and this is only the beginning. This is the beginning of something special um, and why not start with the biggest trophy Look in club the space. football. Look at all the space Look there. at all the space we've got Look to all fill. The space for uh, the we rest. can have number seven there, number eight. This is the European Boulevard section of the tour so we only include our European trophies here. And that parade, did you go to it? Certainly did, went to it twice. So where it started in Allerton Road. Oh and really? Jumped on the train to the end by the Liverpool buildings. Yeah. Amazing. I um, I went to it. Obviously, I went to the parade in 2005, 
that was amazing as a kid. But going this time um, with my girlfriend as well, um, who'd never seen a parade, she's actually a Leeds supporter. She's a Leeds fan. Yeah, yeah well, she's from Leeds, so uh, oh, she's, that's all right. Then, she, she's a Leeds United fan. Um, but I've fully embedded her into the Liverpool culture. I took her to see this, and she said it was just an unbelievable thing. Um, she lives in the city centre, and seeing it packed with Liverpool supporters and red um, smoke just going on, red everywhere, fireworks, welcoming our, our heroes home, turning what? the life of birds red again. Most what a night, thing. what a night, what a day. This is the players' dining area, and they come here after ah, the right, game. I was going to say, because they the get here like an hour before, don't they? So afterwards, they do, after yeah. the game, once they've been legging it around for 90 minutes, expending all that energy pressing, this is where they come and... They come and get the carbs in here. In this room, what I love about it, if you look over here, gather as teammates, we leave as a family. Jürgen Klopp's philosophy. And here we are in the changing room Ooh, of the yes. champions of Europe. How about it? So this this is the actual changing room. This isn't something for the tour's benefit. No. This isn't something that the club have done to say, let's just keep them out. This is the actual a lot of room. A lot of customers do ask that question. They say, is this the actual changing room? Because they think we've got like replicas of these areas. Yeah, like is that we've where Mo Salah gets changed? 100%. Yeah. This is where Mo sits on a match day. This is Mo's cupboard where he puts his belongings. That's where he charges his phone. Th these are the exact... charge my phone there, just to say, <laughs> let's charge it in the same place. These are the actual seats of our players. What's so great about this room is it's soundproof. So the players can play mo like their music for motivation. A lot of them are into hip hop and like playing stuff like that before the game, especially Jimmy Van Alden. He's supposed to be the little players DJ. Okay, he he yeah. knows all the, the newest tracks and everything. Um, but this room, it's um, also, we can adjust the temperatures to suit the players. The, the away team doesn't have that benefit. Because the old one, years ago famously, used to have a, a slippy floor, didn't it? It did. So our floor has always been non-slip. Yeah. But back in Shankly's era, the away team dressing room used to be a normal floor, and, which you can slip on. And they send someone to go and buff it and make it shiny and slippy. Shankly would make someone... Do we do that, do we do that anymore or, or do we, we play a little bit nicer? We play nicer now, uh, we play nicer, but we've still got our psychological advantages. So obviously Shankly used to get um, the cleaners polishing the floor continuously to make it nice and slippy for the opposition in the hopes someone would injure themselves. Yeah. Um, but he made the doors of the home team changing room two inches narrower, two inches shorter. So when the away team was waiting in the tunnel, <laughs> our players walking out of the door out the would look like giants. Um, us, all these little things are little psychological advantages which get into the opponent's head. So here we are, the walk that everybody wants to do. The walk that I'm lucky enough, I have done this walk before. You get to do it every day. I get to do it every day. Maybe a little bit better weather, but what's what you must see people's faces when they come down that tunnel. It's amazing, like their eyes light up. It's like... it, and, and people say, oh, it's life changing. But I, in a, you've got to, if you're a small kid, it so, really or is. if you, you're a big old kid, that's it's a big thing to do. You see it on TV, Even week in, week out. Not only the kids, the adults as well. They're like a kid in a candy store, like coming out and seeing this, standing where Jürgen stands, walking where the players come. This is the closest. Uh, the majority of us will ever get yeah. to the pitch. Um, so getting this close to the pitch and getting a feel for the action, it's really unbelievable, it is. And you can just feel the magic of it, you can feel the power of it. This is the home team dugout. Jürgen Klopp's seat is the bottom left one. Now Danny, did I hear right, someone told me, I don't know how true this is, but these are heated. They are heated. And the away dugout isn't. Is the that, away, that's, that true? that's very true. We thought we'd save on the lecky bills there. <laughs> um, but no, it, we don't take it pers they don't take it personal because that happens a lot in the grounds around the country. The away team isn't heated, the home team is. That's a benefit a lot of stadiums have installed. So that's quite home common. Home benefit, isn't it? Home, home advantage for a reason. But uh, something I've noticed this season is Jürgen Klopp's changed his seat. So he used to be in this um, first one, yeah. but now he's sitting in the second one. Has he and explained his He's not explained it. it. They are the most unused seats in the, in the stadium, let's face it. He's always standing up yeah, and yeah. riling his players on. But he has changed seats and I don't know the reason for that. And I'm very curious as to why he's done that. The, my only uh, guess would be he wants to be able to speak to both of his assistants, okay, Pep yeah. and Peter, yeah. on either side of him. Um, 
so maybe that's why he's chose to sit in between them. But this pitch as well, as you can see, it's getting cut by our groundsman. Um, it is cut five days a week and on a match day. That's why it's looking like a carpet. It's 97% real grass and 3% plastic fibres which sit way beneath the surface, um, known as Deso. Um, Deso is manufactured and imported over from Holland. That just binds the grass together, so when there's a slide tackle or a player slides on the knees for a goal celebration, Not the only grass you're a tour guide, up. you're a grass specialist as well. Well, yeah, you've got to know these things. Uh, something else interesting about it is underneath the pitch is 16 miles of underground piping. Um, which allows the pitch to be played on in ice, frost, snow, all conditions. Right, so that's it. We're here in front of the cop. That's the end of the tour. All I can say is come on it. Danny, thank, thank you. you. I would say um, if you're going to book the tour, ask for Danny <laughs> and get on it. But thanks very much. Oh, thanks cheers, for all mate. your knowledge today and good luck and good luck to everybody else who's coming.